apples. Hey, I can't smell or taste, but I'm fine. Hey, wait, I love how you share the love with all the team there. That's great, man. We're diehard. I see you're doing Throwback Thursday today with that sweater, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. I'm feeling really nostalgic. That a boy. I love it. I love it. You know, I'm wearing the sweaters. I'm looking at buying this thing for myself. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hey, Mr. Neville's. Mr. Klingenmeyer. <laughs> there it is right there, buddy. Don't be jealous. I mean... Neville's, you got like six of those in your house. You could have all of it in one one contraption if you wanted. Thirteen hundred and one. That's how many games. Hey, Mr. Are Munding? Mr. Munding's on. Mr. Mundane. Miss Geely is on. Aubrey Sheed. Mr. Chapman. Looking for Mr. Hogue. Miss Ramos. <clears throat> so, uh, hey, we're coming down to the wire of this wonderful year we've had. Yeah. You had some important 2020 news, didn't you? About 2020? Just we thought it couldn't get any worse? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, you, I don't want to depress everyone out there. <laughs> Yeah, just when you thought it couldn't get worse, you see Metzger and I had a bunch of Santa Claus uniforms. <laughs> oh, man. But wait, there's more, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> well, Actually, there's, there's another picture yeah. we could send that would sum it up, too. <laughs> anyway. So... Mm -hmm. I've been on a bit of a rant, Mets. Go ahead. On what? I, you know, just on. I'm going to go there. I, you know, I just us us included. I just don't think. Even when forget COVID for a second, right? So the rant is about marketing, <clears throat> and I I just think even pre COVID, when we could do everything that we could do, get in the schools you know, do booth events, do tables, do, do all the different stuff that we know that we can do grassroots marketing. It doesn't cost us a lot of money, but costs us time. Mm -hmm. Even when we could do those things, and maybe it's because of COVID that we've had, had this reflection, we're not doing enough of it. And we're not in front of our market nearly enough uh, for them to make a decision and, and, and choose us for an activity for, for their child or, or for, as an adult. And so now that we can't do those things, um, and by the way, I say can't, and I use that term loosely because there are things that we can do. We can still call the schools and volunteer to be PE teacher and, and do some of those things. It's definitely harder. But the question is, what are we going to do to get back in front of these people and, 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 and be an option and be a choice for them? And, um, you know, I, I think for us, you know, part of that, that game plan is really looking at, at Facebook, which we've done before, but I just don't know that we're playing the game big enough right now. And so, you know, we're going to be experimenting with uh, putting more ad spend on Facebook and uh, seeing if we can create predictable results where we know, hey, if we spend X dollars, we're going to get X number of students. And by the way, this is a long play. And, and I, I use the example, but even if you if you spend, I'm, I'm making the numbers up, $1,000 on Facebook ad spend, and I'm making numbers up, so don't hold me to this, guys. And you only enroll five students and your average student brings you a hundred dollars a month. Well, the first month you're out 500 bucks. You spent a thousand, you got $500 in return. And I'm using arbitrary numbers. Assume you don't charge down payments, whatever, just minimal numbers. So you're out 500 bucks and then we get upset and we get frustrated. But if you spend the thousand bucks the next month and you get five students, well, now you've spent 2000 and you've enrolled 10 students and now you brought 500, now you're down a thousand bucks. But that third month, you're going to now enroll another five students. So now you're collecting $1,500 a month, five, five students, five students, five students, but you're only putting out an ad spend of a thousand bucks. So now you're actually net. And over the course of four, five, six, eight, nine, ten 10 months, you continue to leverage that. It's going to be difficult for your competition to try and catch you because now you have perpetual income coming in that you've had coming over the last four, five, six months, 
And if they want to get in the game, they got to put a higher ad spend to, to get in the game with you. And we're going to be out in front of the community more and, and, and be in, in the face of, in the eye of the community. And by the way, that's if you just stay at that thousand dollar ad spend. But I, I'm looking at, you know, maybe up in that ad spend every single month until we see the, you know, we got to measure everything, but until we see the point of maybe diminishing returns. And that's really what I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on right now. I mean, the marketing side, you know, we say all the time, not necessarily that you need to do students. We say that as consultants because most, a lot of schools, I should say, not most, but a lot, have broken internal systems that don't generate a, a good student value. So we fix those systems first, and then we start to enroll more people to bring you more because now it's going to bring you more revenue. Well, we have those internal systems. It's just a, not, a matter of us now is, is filling that pipeline and getting people in. So that's where I'm at, man. My hat's really just focused on, on, on the on the marketing side and the recruitment side. Obviously, we've got to be good at retention. Obviously, we've got to generate revenue. But all those things happen as a byproduct of, of generating more students and, and, and being out there with our marketing. So that's my rant. Well, your rant ties right into the title today, right? It does. An instructor <clears throat> or a program director? Is that the title of the show? If not, we'll just go with it. Who's more important? <laughs> so, you know, it's an interesting question because <clears throat> if we get the diehards on here, um, uh, they're, they're obviously the answer, obvious answer will be an instructor, right? So we, right. we talk about what's more valuable, an instructor or a program director? And I'm just going to open it up by asking you this question, Tass. It really depends. <clears throat> and, and, and how does it depend? Well, first of all, you can't just answer that question because it doesn't fit for every context, right? Right. What if you're a school owner? So if you're a school owner, you got to make the assumption that you're a martial artist. If you open a martial arts school, you're a martial artist. Probably a martial artist before a business person, right? You're a martial artist. I want to open a karate school. And all of us watching this, if you're a school owner and you open a, a martial arts school, or even if you're a staff member for the majority of you, you probably taught the classes. You ran classes, right? So a lot of people say, well, who do I hire first? How do you build a how do you build a team? Well, don't be looking for an instructor because what's more valuable to your business right now, you got the floor. That's the business you got into. We are martial artists. I got the floor. I need somebody that can focus on my office to follow up with what you're talking about on the marketing rant and setting appointments, getting enrollments, getting renewals, getting upgrades, generating retail revenue. I got the floor. So in the context of being a single school owner or a one man show, if you're a one man show, you have to be the one teaching the classes. You have to be because classes must get taught. Now, if you're a one man show, you're going to say, I do it all. I do it all. But not anybody can just jump out there and start teaching classes. Right. So a program director is much more valuable to your business than hiring another instructor in that context, right? right? So what 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 when you heard the question, what's more valuable? How are you perceiving that in your mind? What was your answer, gut gut answer? Did you have a gut answer on that? Well, the gut answer is whoever's getting the results. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my answer, right? Um and but it is that you you go through seasons right in you, in your in your martial art business where it, sometimes in a, a program director is more important sometimes an instructor is more important sometimes a program director is getting the job done but the instructor is not getting the job done so you got to find a you need a better instructor so it it, it, is, it is all contextual and you know i think of it this way right like i don't remember if it was dan kennedy or if it was um um, Jay Abraham, one of the two had said, you know, you think you're in the business of X, you think you're in the business of, of teaching martial arts 
or you think you're in the business of character education or you, life skills or whatever we want to call your business. The business that you're really in is the business of marketing and selling martial art lessons. And that's any business, right? So if you're in a restaurant business, you're in the business of marketing and selling, you know, food to your pe to the people. So whatever business you're in, that's really the business you're in. But what does marketing and selling mean? Well, if I'm an instructor, right? Yes, there's the, I should be doing two week courses and this and everything else, but you can be marketing and selling to your existing students on why they need to stay and on retention and keeping them in your program and all those things. So the, the understanding of marketing and selling is twofold, right? It's there's one where you market and sell every single class guys. If you love this class, wait till you see what we're doing next class. And you're selling the idea of getting them to come back to the next class because that's the retention side. Then there's the true sense of the expression or phrase marketing and selling to martial art lessons where you're literally doing Facebook ads and you're marketing, you're selling, you're getting people enrolled into your school. And, uh, and both of those are extremely important, right? And that's why I say whoever is getting the results is the one you got to keep and you need to find either get the other person better or you need to find a replacement that's going to take that, that, that job to the next level. So just a different yeah. perspective. <clears throat> so, so just the question here for Mr. Monday, what are some creative ways to pay for that position? So here, here's the great thing. I remember when I was a one man show and I was teaching all of the classes, I needed help because I think we've all been there where we have the cordless phone, we're teaching class, the phone would ring, We'd have the class do a drill or jumping jacks. We'd take a message and we'd call them in between classes or call them back, you know, when, when we get an opportunity to do that. So <clears throat> don't overthink it. It's you can hire somebody part time and start them during your peak hours of your business. So it could be 430 to 830, four hours a night or 430 to eight, three and a half hours a night. Um, you got to fit in some time to do some training on that position, right? Some basic training. And, and, and we're not going to go into what do you train them on first? I mean, just I, first, just teach them how to answer a phone and set an appointment. Just that, that by itself, because then I could just have them start calling leads and answering the phone calls and getting appointments set up for me with a calendar saying, here's the times that I'm available. Just set them up at any of these open times. But that position will way pay for itself. It could be an hourly position to start. And as they get into it, it, be, it could become full time. It could have bonuses and, and, and commissions and revenue share and whatever you want to do. But just to fill the void, if you're a one man operator, you could do an hourly, an hourly pay, right? Just to cover that, that weakness in the school. Now, let's say, you have a great instructor and you have a great program director. Who's the more valuable person now? Are you asking me? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. But you, you said it, the one who gets results, right? It is, but, but, but it's also, it's, it's a hand in glove scenario. It's a team. And the, the I mean, I don't mean to sound cliche, but you know, it, it, it's the teamwork. And here's what, what, what I mean when I say that. You could have a great salesperson in your office as a program director, right? But great salespeople that don't come across as salesy are very difficult to find. So therefore an instructor who does an unbelievable job on the floor of presenting the benefits, showing the benefits, teaching life skills, getting kids engaged, always want, or students in general, always want to come back to the next class, painting the picture of, of a long-term, you know, the long-term benefits of your program, why it's important to become a black belt. The, we always say the, se the selling happens on the floor. The closing happens in the office. And so when you have a great instructor on the floor that can do those things, you have people begging to want to do your upgrade program if you have that you have people that are asking you well hey i see i'm coming up for expiration i need to get i mean i need to make sure they get renewed they're asking you because you're delivering at such a high level and so an instructor's uh, position is extremely important on the floor but if you have a weak instructor and now you have an upgrade program because we've had this before which by the way i don't know that was necessarily the instructor i believe it was the 
the curriculum and I believe it was what we were delivering wasn't that inspiring and how it was delivered wasn't inspiring. And when we changed what we were doing, instead of us, and we still do this, by the way, but we nominate people for Black Belt Club, Masters Club, and whether you do upgrades or not is, is, is irrelevant, guys. But instead of us telling them what the benefits are and asking them to do it, which we still do, but we have more people are asking us, well, how do we do that? How do we get in that program? Because they see it. And that's why the floor is, is, is so important. Otherwise, you've got to have a strong program director. The, the challenge with that sometimes is that can come across as salesy and pushy and seeming all about the money. And, and you can be successful that way. But the two, they got to work together, man. That's the thing. They got to work together. So, <clears throat> so it's interesting, right? Like Mr. Munding says, instructor has to deliver the product. Um, so if the question was, who is more important, an instructor, a program, a director to develop high quality martial artists, the answer would be an instructor, right? Would be an instructor. Right. If I say who needs to be stronger for the overall growth of the business and put just we need both. We need both. But separate it a minute. Who's more valuable for the overall growth of the business? An A-plus program director and a C instructor? Or an A-plus instructor and a C program director? Well, it's an A-plus program director and a C instructor because I've had, pro again, it, 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 it's contextual. I've had program directors, that, as an example, that know that someone is up for expiration, take it into their own hands to spotlight, highlight, you know, talk to these people, know they're ready for an upgrade program, take it in their own hands because the instructor, be, maybe the, is it because they're, they're a C plus because of, of, of their, their teaching skills or is it a C plus because of their business skills and they don't understand the big picture on the floor? I mean, you could have an A plus instructor that can teach great martial art classes, but they're C plus in business. They don't understand the power of upgrades. They don't understand the power of retention. It happens by as a byproduct because they teach great classes, but they don't understand the business systems behind it and that, hey, I should be don't going to talk to this person who's expiring in 90 days because they need to understand their value, just like everybody is, but they need to especially know now because they're going to make it be, be making a decision about whether or not they want to continue or, Hey, we need to do a booth event. Or can I get the person that's sitting in the chair that came with Johnny watching class? Can I get him to come out and take class and get a referral and get somebody else to enroll? So they could be an A plus instructor, but a C at business. So my, in my opinion, you need an A plus program director. If you're going to have a C plus instructor, then the next question is, <clears throat> and I believe you can have an A plus instructor with a C plus program director and still be successful. Right. But as successful. Um, no, <laughs> no. Well, then I think you just answered it. Uh, show's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys, there's it's so, so interesting. Variables, though, Matt. There's so many variables, right? Well, that's why I opened it up the way I did, because there's a lot of different contexts of this question. Right. You know, um, but but here's the way you also got to think about it. Who's the first line of communication with your prospects or customers? The instructor or the program director? It's the program director. Yeah, well, for, yeah, if they have one, right? Yeah. I mean, most of the time, most of the time, they're answering the phones, they're greeting the walk-ins, they're following up with birthday party guests that may have come in that they should be there for. Um, and and uh, if you're going to enroll, you know the if you if you're working with kids, the instructor's out on the floor with the the child. But that program director probably builds more rapport earlier with the parents or the adult than the instructor, right? Yep. So it's, it's it's very important. Real quick for Mr. Jackson, or what responsibilities would your program director have? In general, just you know, besides organization and, and cleanliness and, and charisma and a good personality and, uh, you know, a people person and some sales skills, right? Enrollments, renewals, upgrades, retail and services, meaning, 
you know, events and this, that, and the other. An instructor can make all the announcements, but a program director needs to follow through with that. You know, hey, Mrs. Johnson, did, did, did you hear about the, the, the event coming up next Friday? We'd love to see Johnny. Making people feel good. We call it the triangle, right? You have your floor. That's at the top, the floor. It's important because that's, like Mr. Munding said, that's our product. That's the product. But like you said, the sale happens on the floor. Of course it does. When people call the school, they're looking for martial arts. If they're going to come check out the school, before they look and see how clean and great your office is, they're going to take a class or look at the floor. So you got your floor, you got your office, and then you have the gray area, which we call the parent area, the seating area, the spectator area. The That's the gray area, the lobby, right? Program director needs to be working the office and that gray area. Instructor needs to be working the floor in that gray area. You know, so that program director needs to be building that rapport, making sure people's needs are met, making sure that we're on top of the customer service side of things to make their job so much easier. Just like you said, if you have an A instructor, everything is easier, right? It's easy to just get an enrollment if somebody just had an unbelievable class but you got to be organized with that stuff. How many times have you had people do a trial and they've slipped through the cracks and they, they walked out before anybody got to them and it was the last day of their trial? Right. Well, that's on the program director more than anything. You know, we can't let that happen. So how do we not let that happen? We have to have systems set up to where we're not, we're not doing, we're not going for enrollments, let's say the last day of a trial, right? You can't do that. And this is why I talk to all of you guys that like these one week trial specials, you, you think it's good and, and, and what you'll hear consultants in the industry say is, you know, why, why do a month? Get them enrolled now. Like you said, Tass, it's hard, it's harder to find a salesman that works your office. I don't want a salesman in my office. Right. I want a good people person, you know, someone who's friendly, and has a great demeanor and, and presence about them. I don't want a salesman. So it's hard for me to find that person and say, hey, as soon as somebody walks in, let them just try a class sign up up right now. I feel I can do that. I think you could do that. There's a handful of people that can do that. Salesmen could do that. You could sell people before they even try a class. But if you want to do something that's going to make your life easier, you, 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 you put them on some kind of trial with the progress check halfway through that trial to get them enrolled then. And there's a system and a process. But my point is, is if your program director doesn't have organizational skills, they won't have that appointment set. They'll let them fall through the cracks. They won't follow up with them if they did fall through the cracks. This is the stuff that we need being done while we do what we love, which is teach martial arts. And, and if, you, if you teach the best classes in the world, but nobody asks this person if they're ready to sign up or enroll, they may not ever enroll, right? Yep. And we were, we were talking about this yesterday, Tass. How many people call for information and they, they're calling saying, I'm interested. I'm interested in, uh, in martial arts lessons. But if you don't call them back, it's not like they're beating down your door and they keep calling, right? right. Somebody's gotta be the one to throw the line out and bring them in. And, and, and look, I mean, I can give you guys, because, well, just being transparent, right? Because I've had to focus more on our enrollments because we, you know, our main school, we, we lost a hundred students over, over COVID. I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of successful schools, regardless of your success, you, you've lost people, right? And uh, in our second school, you know, they, they were able to maintain through the whole thing. Um, which is fantastic news, but our main school, we lost a bunch. And so the reality is, is we got to replace those people. And when you start spending $2,000 a month in ad spend uh, on Facebook, you start paying attention to where your money's going and you start looking, well, what are the results and how is it working and what are we bringing in and how many leads, and how many booked appointments, how many, and I can't tell you the number of conversations because my my team and they may be watching and they know this they're guilty they're guilty and you will hear people preach this people don't want to talk on the phone so we just text them that's great but you know how many text message threads that i've seen have been open 
Hey, Mrs. Smith, I see you're interested in martial arts. I've got Wednesday or Thursday of this week, four or six, which day works best for you to come in and have a tryout as a free introductory class? Oh, well, let me check with my spouse. End of thread, six, seven, eight days goes by. I see that more and more, and we can't let those things happen. You've got to close that loop. And my suggestion is you do both because some people do want to talk to you on the phone. And some people, if they don't, they will then they'll look at your text message. But you need to make sure you are connecting. And oftentimes, and this is a system that we teach, and you guys have heard this, but if you call up and say, hey, Mrs. this is why you don't want to call, right? This is why people don't want to call. Because they go, well, well, I call. And either you call or you're afraid to call. But if you do call, the call goes something like this. Ms. Smith, hey, it's Shane Tossel with Championship Martial Arts. How are you? Good. Well, and, and, and you get a message. And, and they're, they're, so you say, you know, hey, just want to let you know, I saw you inquired about our program. And look, if you have any questions, here's my contact number. And uh, love to chat with you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. And you hang up the phone. And you don't hear back. And you're like, well, I already called them. I'm not going to call them back. They're going to think I'm pestering them if I call them back. It's because you're not following the system. And, you, you know, we typically tend to call the first two times and don't leave a voicemail if that's the case. Uh, Chris Rodriguez teaches this. The double call. You call and you don't get them. You hang up and you call immediately. You call them back. What happens when you see the same phone number coming here twice, two calls in a row? Oh, it must be important. The deliverability rate of that, of that call goes way up number one and number two if it does go to voicemail you got to leave the door open for yourself for next time to say hey would love to have you come in please give us a call at this number and by the way if i don't hear from you in a day or two i will reach back out to you so we can set something up as a courtesy and always leave the door open for yourself because there people you know we had a, a, a an appointment book literally an appointment booked on our website at 2 51 a.m this morning I'm sorry, but people are not up at 2.51 in the morning going, you know, let me just see this martial art thing. And I really don't have any interest, but let me put my information in there. They don't do that. They put their information because people's emails are sacred. They don't want more junk mail. They, they're putting it out there for a reason. They have an interest. And it's on us to make sure that we pique that interest. But that interest can go away very quickly, right? So if they're interested at 2.50 in the morning... Now, guys, if our team gets in at 3 o'clock, 12 hours has gone by before we've even responded to them. They're going to work. They're dropping the kids off at school if they're in school or wherever they're going. And now 12 hours has passed. They forgot what they did at 2.50 in the morning. You've got to get a hold of these people. You've got to pique their curiosity, get them interested, and get them into your school. Because here's what I know. Of the people that come to our school, the last eight appointments that showed up at our school, seven of those people enrolled into our program. And you guys will all say the same thing. If I just get them to the school, well, then get them to the school. You got to follow up. You know, I used to hear this expression, follow up till they think you're the devil, right? Like just keep following up to get them in. That's what our responsibility is, is to get them in. Because if we truly believe, which is what I hear a lot of people say, well, my goal is to have a big impact on our community. Well, if you really believe that with all your heart, then it's your duty. It's your responsibility to call these people inquiring about your program and get them in and show them what you have to offer and how you can change their lives for the better. Like that's really what it comes down to, you know, but we don't, we, 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 we as a, in an industry do not take, I, I believe the majority of us do not take enough stock in constantly following up and we give up after one or two calls and that's it. And we don't get the results that we could be getting. You get results, but we always talk about it. But are you maximizing your results? And what if you really went after it all in for the next 90 days? What would happen in your school? I mean, it'd be incredible what could happen. Incredible. And that falls more on. The, did you call me a moron? <laughs> yeah. I said that falls more on. <laughs> that falls, yeah, it falls more on the program director. Uh it's on the program director. And I wanted to keep this up there uh, because uh, at what point would you start adding employees? Listen, this is really important. If you see, let, let me just tell the industry this or the very small minority that's watching this. Um, if you are not keeping your stats or your numbers, 
you won't know when to add employees. You won't know how your business is really doing. You won't know where your weaknesses are. You, you will not know. You will guess. You will think you know, but you don't know. You, you guys all think that you have a great retention rate, but you don't know. I mean, unless you keep your numbers and your stats and you know how to do it and you're keeping them right. And the thing is, is I would add employees when I see that, man, we've had X amount of inquiries, only X amount of them showed up for a class, only X amount of them enrolled. I haven't been able to follow up with them. And is it worth it to me? I'm using round numbers, right? $10 an hour, three hours, let's say four hours, three times a week, three times a week, four hours. So that's 12. Is it worth $120 a week to me to see if having somebody there to follow up with leads, set appointments, be a little bit more organized, have better customer service, if I'm not able to do that, um, is it worth it? Well, you don't know unless you're keeping your numbers. Because when you hire somebody, you bring them on for a 60 to 90 day trial period. And if I'm paying out $120, $240, let's just round it to 500 bucks a month, how many more students am I enrolling, upgrading, or renewing with having this person as opposed to what I was doing before? Is it more than paying for this person? And how much more? You got to look at your numbers. And that's when you're going to know. Because at the end of the 60 or 90 days, if you see there's no difference, either you didn't hire the right person or it's not necessary right now to be hiring anybody. You had it so under control. Mets, it, it, this is exactly the same formula that I was just given earlier in the call or the whatever this Facebook live, whatever this is about about your marketing dollars. Right. Same thing. If you don't track the numbers, you don't know. But let's break this down. Like you said, break it down to students. Let's just say you're paying this person. Five, you said 500 bucks a month. Assuming each of your students is worth one hundred dollars. Well, if you normally enroll three students a month, but you won't know unless you track. And now you're enrolling eight students a month. Well, there's your five more students. And by the way, you may go from three to seven this month. And so, oh, you are three to six and you added three, you doubled your enrollment. You doubled your enrollment. You went from three to six. You paid out 500, but you collected a hundred bucks for those three new students. Well, now that person's only costing you 200 bucks to be there for the next month. And the next month they enroll another six or seven students. By the third or fourth month, your investment paid back itself. And now it's all free from there, right? Like, this is so, a growth mindset. But but also, everybody, look, you can't just look at how many students, how many, Tash, you still with us? There you are. You with us? Yeah, you froze. Okay, there. there you go. There you go. It's not just about how many more students you're enrolling. Has your retention rate gotten better? Has your retail sales gone up? Has your participation in different events gone up? You got to look at the whole picture. Now, let's just use your example of enrolling people. Well, what if you hire somebody for 500 bucks a month, a student is worth hundred dollars a month to you. And you, you, for the last two years, you've been averaging three, three new students every month. And of course you have some months where you've had zero, you have some months that you've enrolled six. So we compare like December to December and January to January, we look, but let's say your average went from enrolling three to enrolling four. Now you're just enrolling one extra student a month. Do you keep that person? Well, after five months, they're paid for and the rest is gravy now, even just by enrolling one student. Then you look and say, man, this isn't really working. We're only enrolling like four. We were, we were enrolling three without anybody. I'm paying this money out. We're only enrolling one student. Well, in five months, just those, those five students now will pay for them. But what other benefits am I getting by having that person, you know? And the other thing that people make a mistake on, you've heard me say this a million times. Some people hire, a lot of you hire for convenience and you don't hire for investment. And investment means a return on our money that we're spending. It's a return on our investment. But you don't have to get the return in that month. If, if I told you, hey, give me $1,000, and in six months from now, I'm going to give you back $3,000. But you're not going to get anything from me in month one. You're not getting anything from me in month two or three or four or five. But in six months, I'm going to give you $3,000. How many of you would give me 1000 
to know you'll get 3,000 in six months. Well, that's tripling your, your, your money, right? Same thing when you hire somebody. If I hire somebody, I, I gotta see the trend. And that's why, again, we typically can see that 60 to 90 days, two to three months, we can start seeing what we're gonna get. I may not be covering their cost yet in 60 to 90 days, but I can definitely see we are on the right track and what's coming. And, and then in a few more months, we're gonna get you know, our, our investment back and then some. And that's how you start building your team, guys. Okay, let me see. What else? Yeah, man, I look. Well, Mr. Blackman said our audit scared us. And I don't think he means the IRS audit. I think when I asked him to audit their books, and go through every single student, really look, because I don't know if the numbers were right there, what we thought, right? And this, that, and the other. So let me, let me, when let you me, dive in, go ahead. Let me comment on that because I know a lot of people use, use CRMs, right? And, uh, and here's the danger in a CRM, especially when it's not managed properly. A lot of CRMs tend to, tend to call what I would call your roster number, your roster. They call that your active students. So if you own a CRM company, I would encourage you to change it to roster instead of active count. Because what happens in the mindset of an instructor is we look at the total number of students that we have enrolled in our school. And that number could be, I'm using arbitrary numbers, maybe it's 300 students. Then a lot of these CRMs will have something called a 30-day active, meaning these are the people that have showed up in the last 30 days for at least one class. Well, if you have 300 students and you have 198 people that showed up one time at least in the last 30 days, to me, your active count is 198. And current on their payments. And current on their payments, by the way. And then you have a seven-day active. But we, we because everyone has ego and, and sometimes we don't like to admit to things, we continue to look at that 300 number and we go back and we go like, well, that person's been delinquent. They haven't paid for three months. That person hasn't paid for four months, six months, two months, whatever it is. That person's been paying, but they've not been showing. And we know if, they, if they're not paying, they're not staying at some point. And so we, we use this 300 number because it's a feel-good number for us. And behind the scenes, the, the money and the finances start dwindling because of the delinquents and the people that stop showing, stop paying. And pretty soon we're like, well, what happened? Well, it's been happening the whole time, but you haven't been paying attention to it because you focused on this 300 number instead of on what your true active count is, which is why you got to go through and do an audit. And, and look, this happens in our own company. I, I looked up somebody yesterday. I'm like, I don't even know why they're still, they're an inactive student for us, but they need to be former. They, they, they haven't been paying for seven months. Like they're not going to miraculously start paying right now. You need to clean up your books and your CRM on a monthly basis because when you do that, the chances of you, this is a whole nother thing, but of creating a reactivation system for your former students, the sooner you get them to former, the sooner you start to reactivate them. But sometimes we don't turn these people to former students for six months to a year, and now way too much time has gone by. So. I mean, I'm not going to get all, all, all hell bent on the CRMs because it's not their fault. It's our fault for not looking at the right numbers. We tend to look at the numbers that make us feel good as opposed to the ones that don't. And that's not for Blackmans. That's for that's for all of us, by the way. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, that answers fault. the question. Out of, that falls so, on the program director. Huh? I said that falls on the program director. It does. So at the end of the day, who's more valuable, the instructor or the program director? It really depends. It depends how you're running your school, what the 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 what you have in place at your school. Are you a one man show? Do you have a team currently in place? Are we talking about who's more valuable? Either having a, a program director or having an instructor? Well, it's an instructor. We need to have classes. But if it's the context of who's more valuable as far as who, who needs to be the A-plus person, the instructor, the pro? Well, I don't know. I mean, again, it also depends because a lot of you watching this, whatever you're billing each month, right, just from teaching classes, there's a difference between running a school and growing a school, everybody. But if you're billing check, let's just say your, your recurring monthly revenue is 
10,000 every month. Your payments that come in is 10,000 a month from your software billing company or tuition and you're grossing 11 or 12, well, then your program director is not that valuable because you don't know how to generate the revenue. I mean, you're, you're, you're just, your, your model is based on, I just need more students on my map to build up my, my revenue. But if you're billing 10,000 a month, you, you should be grossing at minimum 20,000 a month. Well, now, now my program director is very valuable because I need that person in there, right? That may not fall in a program director. That may fall in the owner because you don't know the right systems in your school to give to your program director to do those things. So um, <clears throat> there's that. And then I was going to say, you know, this is the other thing. We talked about A-plus instructor and a C-plus program director and vice versa. And the problem with that is you should never have that combination because you're, you're, you said this before, your C plus is going to pull your A plus down. And it's very, very uncommon for your A plus to pull your C plus up. And so, you know, this is why it's so important to always be creating bench strength, create a farm team, always be looking for people. And um, you don't have to hire them. You can collect applications, right? You can do whatever you need to do, but always have bench strength um, because the worst time to find someone is when you need someone. And, uh, and that can be difficult. So, and, and, and uh, yeah, you can't start looking when you need someone because it's a lot more stressful. It's a lot more stressful. Now, TAS, the 2020 yeah. Intensive Academy. Yes. Have you, have you heard about it? I, I think so. Okay. So at the Coming end of up. the day, guys, listen, on December 18th, Chris Rodriguez, who's our digital marketing uh, specialist for Maya, right? Wanted all of our the consultants. It was her idea. She was like, listen, let's do something. 2020 has been a, a, a tough year on our industry. We're putting together like an eight hour seminar on December 18th. It's the, the 2020 Intensive Academy. Um, and I wish I had the, the, uh, the screenshot to pull it up but you can find it, right? Where would they find that? Do you know, Tess? She's probably yeah. killing us right now if she's watching this. <laughs> We're not the mar. See, you don't want to hire us to be your program directors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. I'm oh sure my a, link will, a link will look. magically appear, I'm sure. Look, you can grab your tickets <laughs> if you click the link. Hey, I'm not taking her call. This <laughs> This is this is a lesson, everybody. You just need to have the right resources in your in your company. <laughs> that's correct, and that's why we brought Chris onto the Maya team, right? We're the instructors, but she's a phenomenal instructor herself. Um, but anyway, if you want eight hours, right? We're gonna have different topics. We're gonna have breakout sessions there. We gotta get you into 2021 with a bank, and and I'm gonna give her credit. This was her idea. She wanted to put this together. She's like, we need to do something. Um, and we have such amazing things. But listen, I, now I sound salesy, but it's just honest. I mean, we've spent, Tess, what do you think? Maybe literally like four or five months coming up with the new structure of yeah. helping school owners specifically for where they're at. Um, and, uh, and, and so we're going to start with this. This is, a, a tw uh, like I said, eight hour deal where I'm going to lay out the whole model, the, the, the model of, of what Maya believes that it's going to take to grow your schools and break that down for you. And then you're going to be speaking. Mr. Kurt Klingenmeyer is going to be speaking. Mr. Adam Harmon is going to be speaking. Chris Rodriguez is speaking and hosting. And like I said, we'll have breakout rooms, virtual breakout rooms. But uh, I know there's limited tickets. Uh, you know, those salespeople always say limited tickets. That's our call to action. Uh, but that's the truth. That is the truth. Um, so take a look, click the link. We'd love to see you guys there again. That's going to be Friday, December 18th. It will be recorded. Um, Matt, and, and I just want to say something about it because, you know, we got together as, as consultants this last week and we talked about, you know, the, the topics and you guys can see what's being presented. Those are topics that we're going to be going over. And, um, you know, I, I think what's interesting about what we do is I think there's a lot of, of, of di well, what we do, I just want to say what everybody else does, right? But a lot of what we do is not hyperbole. A lot of what we do is we're going to get you excited, but we're going to show you what to do. 
And so you're going to leave knowing exactly what to do and how to track things and, and how to improve your school. Whereas a lot of times it's just hyperbole. Like, oh, you got to see this holiday event that we do. And we, this is great. And we make all this money and we don't come off or take anything off of our billing. And, and we, they, they build up, build up, build up. And there's no, there's no like how to do it. As a matter of fact, when I first started consulting, I'll never forget Metzger. You told me, you said, listen, you got to get in there and you got to go and, and take this in context, people go for the throat. And what he meant was, was that I need to deliver immediately re- need to deliver actionable results for people to go that they can take back. This is a bullet point list that you can go take back and put in action. And that was, that was how I was brought in as a consultant. It wasn't like, well, just get them excited, but don't really tell them stuff and get them to buy our product. That wasn't the idea. It was go give them valuable information so they can see the value in what we do. And then they're going to want more of that valuable information. And that's really what this intensive is. So it's going to be a lot of great information for you guys that you can go and implement. And then, of course, if there's something that fits for you guys that you want to take your school to the next level, that certainly will be an option for you as well. But a great lineup and, and a lot of great topics people are going to be covering. Right. Yep. So December 18th. And by the way, next Thursday, we'll be back. And the topic next Thursday, start thinking about this, everybody. Come with your opinions. It is what's more important, recruiting new students or retaining existing ones? Hmm. And by the way, everyone can have their opinion, but I want to know your why. Well, why is recruiting more important than retaining? Or why is retaining more important than recruiting? So let's talk about it next. As a bonus, if you know your attrition rate for next call, you can drop it in the comments. <laughs> you got to know how to get your attrition rate, right? Because everybody has a different way. And the way that the, the billing companies or software companies, it's it's right. it's not the accurate way, right? That's based on on that payments is. a lot of times that were attendance and or, or both in their own definition. I mean, it's so, but, uh, you know, we, we, we got to help you there. So next Thursday, guys, hope you had a great Thanksgiving last week. Mm -hmm. you weren't on and uh hope you have a great uh week i'm gonna be out of town this week and for those of you with kids if you do elf on the shelf i mean you could just say he's quarantined for a couple weeks and put him in a jar i mean i've seen that one there you go yeah that makes it easy save yourself some some headaches (laughs) right right exactly sweetheart there's covid right now he can't come out in this that's right that's right (laughs) all right guys have a great one Talk to you later. Thanks for coming, guys. All right. See you later, Mets. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.